Hey, what's up guys, and welcome back. Today we're going to be working on Steam Engine Simulator's new DLC, but first I'd like to thank BeamNG, Reyna, Meister, Joe, and Bacteria Rancher for supporting me at the Master Mechanic level on Patreon, and Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Brilliant.org is a great platform that offers a wide variety of amazing interactive courses. These courses have high-quality, hands-on practice problems, and demonstrations to make sure that you fully understand the subject matter they cover. So it's not just memorization or information being presented on the screen. Comprehension and real learning is the goal. Probability is an important concept to understand for a lot of different software techniques, and this course, Predicting with Probability, is a great introduction to the topic. Overall, it's a really great service, and I highly recommend trying it out. To try all of Brilliant's features for 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash ontothegreat, or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Once again, thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Alright, so this is what the DLC looked like the last time we talked about it. I said at the end of that video that we're only missing a small gauge cluster and the mailbox feature and it'll be ready for release. I probably shouldn't have said this so confidently though. Shortly after that video, I released a build to my testing group, and what ensued was complete chaos. The Discord chat was immediately flooded with irate gamers, and some of the complaints were minor, like the wires are just too wobbly, or just general confusion about why the generator kept spinning even when the engine was disconnected. Things that I thought would be intuitive turned out to really not be for the majority of players. For example, I thought it was obvious that profitability would depend mostly on fuel economy, but virtually no one from the testing group picked up on this. Instead, they accumulated hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt while keeping the heat level way too high, which inevitably ended up blowing up their boilers, making them even more frustrated. And yes, you can blow up your boiler now, but we'll talk about that later in the video. In general, testers found the game stressful and unintuitive and complained that the difficulty progression was suboptimal. And in case it wasn't obvious, this game was not supposed to be a rage game, so the way the players were reacting to it was not at all what I wanted. It was a complete disaster. This group was about as biased in my favor as possible since they were my own Patreon supporters, paying customers on Steam who were not so invested in the project and weren't as knowledgeable about engines as my testing group, would likely have torn this game apart. Now, getting negative feedback like this wasn't fun, but that was far from my biggest concern, which was the effect this was going to have on Engine Simulator's timeline. A large proportion of you watching are more interested in my main project, Engine Simulator, which is what my channel is known for. A lot of my Patreon supporters are also eagerly awaiting Engine Simulator updates, and the simulation prototype that I demonstrated in my last video works really well and it's just waiting to be made into the final product. So no one wants to continue working on Engine Simulator more than I do, but the reality is, I just couldn't do it. The DLC already had around 40,000 wish lists on Steam, and at least a few thousand people actively following its progress on YouTube, Steam, and Discord. Canceling it wasn't an option without upsetting a lot of people, and throwing away hundreds of hours of development time. However, releasing the product as it was would have been even worse than cancelling it. The hostility that I deal with on Steam is already enough that I dislike posting on the platform in general. I can't imagine what I'd have to deal with after people both paid for this product and continue to spend 12 hours getting nowhere before demanding a refund. So I was stuck with a set of bad options and multiple large groups of people who all wanted different things from me. It was hard to tell if anything I was doing was making anyone happy. Like, for example, in my last video about this DLC, the top comment was a suggestion for a completely different DLC. For the first time in my short game development career, the pressure was getting to be a bit too much. Alright, so now that we know what happened, we need to figure out how to solve this problem. And to do that, we need to come to terms with some realities first. No matter what I do, I won't be able to keep everyone happy. I know this might seem perplexing to some of you, but it's very important to me to release this product in a state that I'm happy with, and I want to do that before moving on to Engine Simulator. If you're frustrated that I'm not working on exactly what you want me to be working on, I get it. I do get a surprising number of people asking or demanding that I work on a particular thing, 
which is a bit disappointing for me, but it shows that people actually care about my work, which is not a bad thing. Likewise, it seemed like the testers didn't really enjoy this DLC very much, but at least now, they actually cared about the outcome of the game. In all previous versions, testers were mostly neutral, maybe even disengaged. The game was at least engaging players now, which was a step in the right direction. We just need to take the hundreds of points of feedback and try to improve it while keeping the schedule under control. We'll focus on its two major issues. Number one, the initial learning curve is just too steep. And number two, the difficulty progression was not very satisfying and it leaves players bored at some points and frustrated at others. Let's look at the learning curve first. I tried to avoid including a tutorial in this game by making intuitive mechanics that required little to no explanation. The game's primary loop that I mentioned in the last video mirrored real life economic principles and it worked like this. Lower fuel usage allows lower energy prices. Lower energy prices increase demand for migration to the city. Greater populations require more energy and larger amounts of energy can be produced more efficiently just due to the economy of scale. Higher efficiency allows lower fuel usage, and the cycle continues until the maximum population is reached. I really overestimated how obvious this mechanic was to players. The game seemed perfectly understandable and logical to me since, I mean, I developed it, but expecting players to figure it out immediately was probably not reasonable. Most kept the electricity price too high for too long, accumulating hundreds of thousands of dollars without actually progressing in the game. Others focused on just running the engine at whatever heat level worked, which was usually many times the required level for the conditions they were operating under. Some players completely misinterpreted the goal of the game and instead of maximizing population, maximized profit by adjusting the electricity price to always exceed their expenses, instead of adjusting their fuel use to keep expenses below their income. It was also unclear to players how all the controls were meant to be used. The intention was to present a set of basic controls and leave it to the player to figure out how to use them to achieve the game's goal. However, most players didn't seem to enjoy this process of discovery. To fix this problem, we can do what most games do and start with an easy section that introduces the player to the game's controls and goals. I added a task list and a letter viewer to this previously empty area. Some of the visuals are still temporary, so just ignore those for now. Having a list of tasks that need to be done and completing those tasks seems to be enjoyable and much easier to understand for players. I also created a simple mission tree to organize all of these tasks like most other games do. This is a generic system, which will make it easier to implement the rest of the game's story later. The first section of course consists of a few tutorial missions, and the goals are mostly understandable from the task list alone, but the complete details are given to the player through short letters from the game's NPCs, which will also give some background and history into the town. The town's mayor and a local mechanic are the first two NPCs to make an appearance, and they run you through some routine tasks like fixing power lines, fixing a ruptured boiler, and adjusting the engine's controls. To teach the player about operating the steam engine, I went a step further and added an AI that can run the steam engine autonomously. I could have hacked the simulation to force particular speeds or values at particular times, but I think the AI approach is much more powerful. Firstly, it proves to the player through direct demonstration that the game is possible with the right inputs. It can also work as a co-pilot, allowing the player to control a few of the settings while it handles the rest. This allows the game to slowly transfer responsibilities to the player as they become more familiar with the game. The AI also helps with the development of the game since it can be used for automated testing that would have otherwise taken me hours of manual gameplay. It's oddly satisfying to watch the AI adjust the steam engine in response to changing load, so I might use it for something in the future, maybe as a separate game mode. If you're wondering how it works, it's a pretty simple feedback loop system the output parameters that we are interested in are water temperature, engine speed, and water level. Each of these outputs is primarily controlled by the heat level, throttle valve, and water valve respectively. We also have two safety devices, the relief valve and the brake, which can be used to prevent boiler overpressure and engine overspeeding. 
These safety controls do reduce efficiency when they're enabled, so they're only used in exceptional circumstances. Each of the feedback loops senses the output and incrementally adjusts the input until that output value is reached. In the case of engine speed, for example, if it starts dropping below the target speed, the throttle setting will be increased. When the throttle valve is open, more steam will flow out of the boiler, which will cool the water, likely causing an increase in the heat setting from the heat feedback loop. So the systems mostly do not know about each other and work independently to keep everything balanced. Alright, next we're going to take a look at fixing the game's difficulty progression. One of my testers kindly put together this chart illustrating the problem. We can safely assume that the left half of the chart refers to the steep learning curve, which should be mitigated by the tutorial that we added earlier. The progression from 4,000 to 12,000 people seems pretty reasonable until we see some of the modifications that another tester added to the graph. It seems that the real issue here is that the game is too easy and does not present enough challenges in the middle of the progression. So why did this happen, especially when I put in so much effort in the last video to specifically prevent this from happening? Well, the early game frustration definitely didn't help, but beyond that, I think there were some flaws in the approach that I used. So I developed a new model which should solve these issues. To understand this new approach, we first need to understand what we're even measuring here. The game is about engine efficiency, so we need to compare the player's performance with some sort of benchmark. The problem is that we're using a real simulation, so we don't know or have direct control over its exact performance characteristics. Just like last time, we need to study the engine and characterize its behavior. I added some debugging features to help with this and eliminate as much human error as possible, which I think may have skewed some of my results from last time. The end result was a function that maps power demand to the minimum required heat setting at a steady state. This establishes an upper limit for how efficiently the engine can be operated. We can then use this to calculate the theoretical lowest cost that energy can be sold at. The problem is that this value varies with power demand. Just feeding the current power demand into the model to get the lowest possible price gives us an instantaneous value which can fluctuate drastically. I tested many solutions to this and ultimately decided on using a 24-hour rolling average. While implementing this, I also realized that there was a serious flaw in the previous model. Simply time averaging the power demand and then feeding that into the market price model doesn't give the average market price over that period, which explains why the game was so easy before. I won't go into the math behind this, but I will heart any comments on this video which give the correct mathematical explanation for why this is wrong and how to correct it. It's not too hard to figure out, and it was a pretty careless mistake on my part. The NPCs will explain how this energy price mechanic works as part of the player's training, but to make it even more clear, the metrics are visualized with these approval bars, showing affordability, reliability, popularity, and overall demand. Using the AI that I created earlier, I was able to verify that the model was correct and roughly followed the AI's performance. The AI isn't perfect, but likely performs better than most humans. Now that we have a precise benchmark to compare the player's performance to, we can precisely adjust the difficulty by varying the leeway given to the player as the city gets bigger. The game might start with a 20% unfair advantage against the market, which goes to 0% as the city grows, effectively making the game harder and harder. I don't want to leave the difficulty progression entirely up to this though, which brings us to our next feature. Now I won't give away too many spoilers, but let's just say the player will need to react to problems that become progressively more challenging. For example, a drought natural disaster will prevent the player from being able to fill the boiler with water. They can, however, prepare for this by filling the boiler beforehand enough to survive through the disaster. This is just one of many other challenges like throttle failure or sudden increases in demand which will force the player to think creatively and it'll also break the monotony of the predictable day and night demand cycle. These challenges also follow the game's storyline, which I don't want to reveal too much about, but it's another way of more precisely adjusting the difficulty curve as the game progresses. 
There were many other minor points of feedback from testers, which I also addressed. I'll list just a few of the larger changes in this video. Like for example, I added some sound effects for power outages, repairs, and gear shifts and other events. Testers often missed cable snapping events, and an audio notification should help with this. I added boiler explosions because they've been heavily requested since the game first released, and I felt that the game didn't have enough negative consequences for overheating the boiler, at least for the DLC. For the main game mode, it doesn't really factor into it that much, but it is there uh, just by popular demand. In total, this project consists of around 86,000 lines of code. About half of that is for the game engine and physics engine, which I had already written before, and the remaining 42,000 lines is specific to this project. Now, line count isn't a great metric to evaluate project scale, but the point is that creating high-quality software with attention to detail takes a lot of time and effort. I know it looks simple, but I really don't think development could be sped up, at least from a single person team like myself, and using a game engine like Unreal wouldn't help since this project is not game engine bottlenecked. My game engine has performed perfectly well, and this game has been tested on hundreds of thousands of computers at this point. So I have all the debugging tools I need to make the game, it just really does take a lot of effort if you want everything to be perfect, and I really want people to feel like, for the money that they're paying, they're actually getting something good, especially considering that the base game was free. If you're interested in what my day-to-day -day development progress looks like, I post detailed daily updates on Discord, so feel free to join the Engine Simulator Discord server, the link to that is in the description. I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters for being very patient with my perfectionism, and really making this project possible. They will all, of course, be getting a free copy of this DLC. And of course, thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.